Hello and welcome to The Shooting Show. This week I'm going to be taking two of the most popular rimfire calibers, the 17 HMR and the 22 LR, and putting them together in a head-to-head -head comparison. Let's have a very quick look then for the two rifles that we're going to be using for the comparison. The first one is my trusty 22LR rifle. This is a CZ452 American. Um, very good rifles these, very, uh, very cost effective and not expensive, but they're always very accurate and reliable straight out of the box. Um, sat on that, I've got an Element. Uh, this is the Titan. This is actually a new model that's literally just come out. And uh, so I'm kind of doing a little bit of a test on that as well. Very nice little scope that though. Um, held on with the uh, sports match mounts. We've got a LEI little compact moderator on there and uh, yeah all in all nice little rifle. Um, in fact I've literally just pulled up down the farm here and uh, there was a, a crow sat out in the field where well, several actually but one sat around a bit too long and I just not ran over no problem at all with this out at, I think it was 105 yards so it's a fair stretch for a 2-2 but once you get to know the drops and that it's perfectly doable. The other rifle we'll be using is this one this is a ticker uh, T1X Real nice little rifle this, nice little compact short barrel, it's got a Stallon compact moderator on there. Uh, shoots very well, very accurate, I've been very impressed with this so far. We're using again another element scope on there, this one's the Helix, uh, held on again with a sport smash mount, this one's the quick release version and that's on there with a uh, Picatinny rail, very kindly supplied to us by Alan Rose, a, a, a Contessa rail. Um, so yeah, that's the two guns, so let's have a look at the ammunition. So the ammunition we're going to be using for the uh, testing today is we've got some Hornady 17 grain VMAX, that's for the um, HMR, and we've also got some Ely 2.2 subsonic 38 grain rounds, which we're using in the 2.2. So then, what actually are the benefits of using a 2.2 LR, or long rifle as it's otherwise known? Well, this little bullet has been around since the 1870s when it was first created, and it stood the test of time for a very good reason. Firstly, it's a very cheap um, form of ammunition. You probably, about six quid or something for a box of 50. And uh, the other benefit to it is, is available in a subsonic version, which means it's very quiet. It's about as loud as an air rifle. These Ely subs, they have a muzzle velocity of around about 1,020 foot per second and will deliver somewhere in the region of 100 to 120 foot pounds of energy. And then we've got the vicious little 17 HMR bullet. This was developed by Hornady back in 2002 and uh, is a 2.2 uh, Magnum case neck down to take a 17 calibre bullet. So this little bullet has a muzzle velocity of around about 2,550 foot per second and delivers around about 245 foot pound of energy. It's also extremely flat shooting, fast and very, very accurate. So it's generally accepted if you zero a two to around about 50 to 60 yards, then you're going to be shooting straight out to 70, 80 yards with very little drop. Take that out to 90 to 100 yards, you are going to see a bit of drop on that. But if you know the drops on the rifle, it's still perfectly capable. It's got the accuracy and it's got the power there. The beauty of the 2.2, of course, is that it gets there and it gets there quietly. The downside to it is it is very prone to ricochets. So the beauty of the 17 HMR is that it's a very flat shooting and very accurate cartridge. So it's generally accepted with this, if you zero it uh, 100 yards, then out to probably 150 yards, you're not going to see an awful lot of drop on that. Pretty much out to 120, you're probably looking practically just flat shooting on rabbits. So anything out to 120 yards is fair game with this rifle with very little concern for drops. So another big advantage to the 17 HMR is being that it's a very light and fast travelling bullet, it also breaks up very well on impact, meaning the chance of ricochet are practically nil. The downsides to this calibre are that it does go a bit more of a crack than the 2.2 and also ammunition is around about three times the price. So first off then, let's take these two babies out at 50 metres and see how they perform.
Okay, so we've got a target out here at 50 metres, so let's see how we do. As you can see, that's a respectable little group there. That's at 50 metres, and that's using the Ely Subsonics. Okay, so let's now have a look and see how the HMR fares. So the first thing you notice is it's quite a bit louder. Right, so we've come back to 100 metres, so we're going to see how each rifle performs at that distance. We'll start off with the HMR and then we'll use the 2-2. So as you can see by that, all those bullets are practically on top of one another, which just goes to show why the HMR is such a popular round. So now we give the 2-2 a go using the subsonic ammunition. So this is interesting. This is using the 2-2 LR with subsonic ammunition. So here's the point of aim. I intentionally put this higher knowing that it would drop. Now what I did was I thought, well, I'll demonstrate just how much it drops from a 50 yard zero. So I aimed here and my first shot is down here. So I've got probably the best part of a foot of drop there. Now I then held off and these are my shots, all with the same hold. So you can see that that group has opened right out and it's also drifted slightly to one side there, possibly with a bit of windage or something. But as you can see, it's, um, it's not a very good group at all. So let's look at the HMR group. As you can see from that, that's a much better group, all on target, just a little bit of left and right wind drift there, but certainly still a very usable round. So looking at that then, you might think, well, the 2-2LR is definitely outclassed by the HMR. And certainly when it comes to flat shooting and accuracy at longer ranges, the HMR certainly does have its advantages. However, the 2-2 does have an ace card up its sleeve. It can also shoot high velocity ammunition. These are CCI Stingers and a 2-2 extra long rifle. So we'll give these a go and see if they can tip the tables just a little bit. So looking at that, it's clear to see that the, uh, the 17 HMR has better accuracy with its ballistic tips. Um, these are soft-nosed hollow points and uh, they're probably not quite so good ballistically. As you can see, that group's opened up a bit, but it does still mean that the 2.2 is still a highly effective cartridge, even at 100 meters. So we can't really rule it out just yet. One last test to do before we go demolition time. Let's see what explosive power we can get from this cartridge downrange. Well, I think that's pretty conclusive test as which one's the more destructive. Um, so, so these are the two that were shot with the 2.2 LR. Uh, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure which one was which there, but there's not really an awful lot between it. They're both pretty much equally, uh, equally devastated. 
um, but the uh, HMR as you can see has just done a shocking bit of devastation to that it's literally as soon as that's hit that that's just imploded so yeah very impressive so I think bearing in mind that I've got to send that rifle back very soon um, I'm gonna make the most of it and uh, for a change leave the 2.2 at home and take the HMR out after a few bunnies this evening so after a quick zeroing session with a Sightmark Wraith 4k from Scott Country we're off to get some bunnies Right, so it's not quite dark yet, but uh, it's pretty near. And um, there was uh, several rabbits out in this field here. And uh, I just shot two. First one was at about 60 meters, and the other one was 84 meters, and range with the accolades. And uh, surprisingly enough, even though those shots went with a bit of a crack, uh, I've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, still another nine rabbits in the bottom corner of this field which are around about 130 to 150 meters away so they're not overly bothered rabbits there one was at 80 and the other one was about just over 90 meters so um, yeah perfectly perfectly suited to this sort of caliber I've got to be honest I think I'm falling for this caliber all over again I love it I'm smitten Well there we go, it wasn't a bad couple of hours, counted for 13 rabbits there and uh, I could have accounted for quite a lot more I'm sure but I think that's enough for, for now so as I say, a couple of hours work and um, the uh, little TX1 there, or T1X I should say, performed very well, nice little rifle that and uh, sight mark wraith on there again, did the job nicely shot rabbits there from probably 50 yards out to 135 yards was the furthest so all in all yeah nice little setup and uh, I've definitely rekindled my love for the 17 HMR thanks for watching my name's Nick Ridley and welcome to a brand new series called Pup to Peg over the next couple of years I'm hopefully going to turn a little tweak here into a fully fledged gun dog and you can follow our progress on the shooting show. Well welcome back, it's been a month or so since we did that last little introduction uh, to this new series of uh, Pup to Peg and uh, all the pups now have gone to their new homes and we're left with young Twig so it's time now for me to start thinking about uh, training. Now I get asked quite a lot uh, how old these pups should be before you start training them. Well, in truth, I don't like putting an age on when you should start anything. But definitely when they're young, uh, certainly up to six months old, it's all about conditioning rather than actual training. And one of the things I start to condition them with is one of these, which is called a place board. Now, place boards are fairly recent to gun dog training, and I've used them for about the last six or seven years. And um, I find they really help me uh, in my training it gives the dog something to focus on and also it helps me to, to focus especially with the, the spaniels this is a, a, a plastic board uh, made by a company called Kato uh, I've used wooden boards you could use a hoop you could use a mat it doesn't really matter um, I personally think these place boards work better than something that's flat on the ground because it just gives the dogs a bit of a step up and I've found that once they get on them uh, they're more likely to stay
Uh, this will get her sit and stays. I can do some directional work off of it. I can do her recalls on it. So all that basic foundation stuff that's so important in gun dog training, this piece of equipment will be vital for it. One of the things I'm very conscious of with young Twig here is to make sure she bonds with me. Uh, we're a multi-dog household and obviously I've got the mum and dad, Dot and Percy as well. So I'm very, very conscious that I've got to spend plenty of time with her on my own. She plays with them, uh, but I don't want her beginning to bond too closely with them rather than myself. And uh, that can be a bit of an issue if you've got more than one dog in your household. So I spend a lot of time with her on my own. Um, we might just come out in the garden like this and just have a bit of a sit around. She's only just had her second jabs, so she can't go out into the big wide world. Obviously the other thing I've really got to try and teach her is her name. And um, although she's been twig from quite early on as a young pup, she obviously doesn't know what that name means yet. Uh, so lots of use of her name as well. Um, twig, 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 yeah, yes, yes, yes. And uh, it's amazing actually how quickly she's cottoned on to that. Uh, is the, we chose Twig as a name because it's, it's different to the other dogs. Uh, again, when you've got a multi-dog household, uh, it's quite important that you try, especially if you're going to work all your dogs together at the same time, which may well happen in the future, uh, the, the names have to be sufficiently uh, different so the dog knows which one you're speaking to. So as well as more of this kind of informal bonding that we're doing, uh, I've obviously started Twig on some of her conditioning and the first thing I've used is the place board. So what I'll do is I'll go and get the place board and um, I'll just explain how uh, I've started her off. I have to say she's really cottoned on to it very quickly. We've only done it a few sessions and uh, you can see she's really phased by all this camera work. And uh, we've only done it for a few sessions and she's really, really switched onto it uh, really, really quickly, uh, which is great. So that, that's all boding well for the future. So just before we get Twig out to do a little bit of work on the place board, I just want to go over a few, a few things. So a place board is obviously rectangle in shape and there's, there's a reason for, for that. That's not an accident. Uh, it forms a bit of a runway for the dog when it comes in. So you wouldn't need to be standing at the back of the board with the long edge away from you. The second thing is before you start using them, make sure they're stable. Uh, don't want it on rocky ground because especially when you're dealing with young puppies like this, you don't want them coming onto the board and then it being all wobbly because it will just put them off of it. Now the theory of this board is quite simple. It has to be a nice place for the dog to be. Good things happen on there. They get a treat in the early stages. They'll get um, a stroke, a pet, some bonding. It's just a good place to be. So I need a method to get her up onto this board and I, I will use treats for that. The one thing I won't use treats for is retrieving. Uh, because that can encourage the dog to spit the retrieve out before um, it gets to you and deliver it to hand. So there's my board. I do have a few treats in my pocket. And uh, as I say, I've done a couple of little sessions with, tweet, uh, with Twig with this. So we'll just get her out and see uh, how she gets on. Come. Twig, come. Sit. So have you noticed there, she's come straight on and sat on the board. And that's because from right at the very beginning when I've started to use the place board, I've just got her to come on, told her to sit, give her a treat. The other thing you'll notice there, she's looking at me, she's not looking around, I've got complete focus of her and I've not been too quick to give her a treat at the moment. Now I will, good girl, well done. And at the same time, I'm just giving her that little stroke under her chin. Stay there. Wait. That's good for 10 weeks old. And bearing in mind, she's a Cocker Spaniel out of two high driven parents. You're a good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Just remember these little puppies have really short attention spans. And so keep your conditioning, training, whatever you want to call it, keep it nice and short, just a couple of minutes a day and you'll be surprised how much progress you can make. And uh, well, we keep going with Twig and we'll see you in the next edition of the shooting show. Good kill, good kill, yeah. If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.